Tell me, someone with a mechanical engineering master's, um, how do they get into the gas station business? And did you ever feel that, I mean, you've, you've kind of outlined the process, but did you ever feel that you were, you know, underutilizing your skills at, at any point? You know, at that time, I didn't worry as much about my educational background and capabilities. The whole idea was um, to grow what I have in my hand. Mm. Let me focus on what I'm doing. Um, uh, you know, we're, we're making good money, we're, customers are happy, and as you grow, the, you know, the challenges grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was more focused on meeting those challenges, but, and the challenges could be delivery challenge. The customer is looking for this, and I have to deliver on time. As we are growing, finding the right employees, you know, and you know, there was so many challenges that I didn't have time too much to think. Although sometimes in the back of my mind, I always felt that, you know, this this is not my core competency. I mean, I'm an engin you know engineer, but I always knew that I'll come back to engineering one day. This is the time I have to pay my dues, mm -hmm. and uh, ha you know, engineering, a business in engineering takes a lot of money. Uh, a lot more than a you know, small retail business would. And I, I knew my limitations at that time. I had to get enough money saved to go back into engineering and technology business. Mm -hmm. So uh, at that time, I had to focus on this business, what I have in my hand, and I did. But uh, within five, six years, six years, I was feeling burnt out mm -hmm. with retail. Uh, I mean, it can burn out anybody very fast. Yeah. You know, 24 by 7 operation is not easy. And, and uh, um, so about six, seven years mm -hmm. into it, I started thinking what to do. How do I get back into my technology field? Mm -hmm. uh, because the time is right. I need right. to get back into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, as I evaluated different options, I didn't feel that there was as much uh, opportunity to grow within the mechanical engineering field. Uh, because most of the focus of the country was towards IT. Mm -hmm. And especially uh, because of two major events or phenomena that were going on at that time. One, of, one event was the Y2K. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one was the, really the startup of internet mm -hmm. um, or popularity of internet, which, uh, which caused such a huge shortage of talented IT engineers in this country that uh, majority of the country was focused on delivering to these two um, events and a lot of IT talent needed to be quote unquote imported yeah. into the country at that time. So it created such a huge demand of IT folks and I felt if I, uh, you know, service to that demand uh, it would be easier entry for me. How did you find the right people? Well, as, as we all know, it was very difficult to find the right people here in the U.S. Most of the people, all the people that, that are available who knew how to you know, perform these two uh, functions um, or you know, had the right skills to do the, the Y2K work and the uh, internet programming work uh, were all employed uh, on projects, but there was you know, more demand than there was supply. Mm -hmm. So um, I found that I was at the right time, um, in the right place, where I could import or you know, bring a lot of these resources from India mm -hmm. on H-1B uh, visas. Mm -hmm. So I spent uh, several months in India trying to find those uh, resources. Uh, interviewed thousands of people in six different major cities in, US, in, in India mm -hmm. and narrowed down to about 120 people that I could bring here um, you know, in US on you know, H-1B visas. Mm -hmm. So that, that was the, that's the way we got started into the IT f industry. Uh, well, tell me about more about the business now. What uh, what uh, fields does American Cyber Systems cater to, and um, what what is your customer base like? 
Well, over the years, we grew this business uh, into a different direction. The H-1B was just the beginning. That's how we got started into it. But when the, when the Y2K was finished, uh, at the turn of, you know, as, as the, we turned from 99 to 2000, um, and nothing, no big uh, event happened afterwards, no catastrophes, uh, that, then uh, that H-1B model kind of dried up because there was no huge demand for IT folks after that. So we had to quickly shift uh, our direction and become more of a mainstream company where we um, put American resources onto American projects. Um, and uh, so we, we acquired some really good customers at that time who were still uh, growing and Capital One was one of the customers, uh, which gave us a pretty good, uh, you know, growth in that time. Um, and uh, and so with that one company that carried us for about a year, um, then we went into the DOD space. Um, in fact, uh, that's where our next big growth came from. Uh, as we know, we are in a, you know, uh, after the 9-11, so much of com countries' focus was in the defense mm -hmm. spending, uh, defense uh, side of the, uh, that we, we decided to move into the DOD space. So um, w the customer, the first major customer that we acquired in DOD was Northrop Grumman. Uh, that gave us tremendous growth in that time, and the rest of the industries were all down after, after the 9-11. DOD was the only industry that was uh, pretty high. We, we latched on to Northrop Grumman, did very well with them, and, and then from there, we got into Raytheon and many other customers. In the process, I got myself um, cleared. I, I hold top secret clearance. Um, and uh, so because of that, my company holds top secret facilities clearance. Mm -hmm. So we completely shifted, within a few years, we shifted from being an H-1B oriented company to be a top secret company. Wow. And we most, had- Most people would think that would, that's unheard of, you know, in, in this day and age, especially in the climate after 9-11 where you had kind of xenophobia, you know, had a lot of fear of anything foreign. I know. But you know, uh, it's true, but I'm, as American as anyone, mm -hmm. I've been here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. um, I have my entire family. My wife has, you know, originally from India, but his, she's been here for 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, we are as Amer I mean, it's just, you know, we, we're immigrants, but America is full of immigrants. Right. By, I mean, uh, in DOD did a two-year-long thorough investigation you know, especially because of the times we live in, mm -hmm. anyone who is from other countries investigated thoroughly. Mm -hmm. But they awarded me top secret clearance. They awarded my wife top secret clearance. Mm -hmm. We both own this company, mm -hmm. technically. She's owner, but although she doesn't in get as involved in the business. Right. But based on that, we got facilities clearance and we, we placed hundreds of programmers on DOD projects. Mm -hmm. and half of those hold top secret clearance. Wow. We're, you know, so we completely changed the look and feel and outlook of the company yeah. during that time. So from, so from H-1B, we went to the financial industry, to the DOD industry, and kept on growing rapidly from that point onwards. 